Ah, Mr. Chad Money Mendez, how are you, sir? I'm doing all right. Hanging in there. Now, you're currently ranked number five in the world at featherweight. You're set to face Alexander Volkanovsky at UFC 232 on December 29th. How are things? Things are good, man. I think we're two and a half weeks out from the fight, just about. Um, we're kind of winding down on the camp. It's been a absolutely, knock on wood, it's been a perfect camp. I'm trying to just keep everything injury-free from here on out. And, uh, you know, everything is, is, is lining up like it should and fine-tuning like it should. And I'm excited, man. I can't wait to get in there and perform again. Awesome. Uh, how's your Fins and Feather business going, your celebrity outdoor adventure service? It's been good, man. We, um, we're all wrapped up for 2018. We will be launching our 2019 schedule um, right in the beginning of January. Uh, but 2018 was a huge success. We had a ton of clients. We had a lot of people um, that were able to tag out, take a bunch of organic, free-range meat home, uh, make some awesome memories. And you know, a lot of those guys are returning clients from past years. So uh, we'll just continue to keep those guys going, and hopefully, add some new ones uh, each year and uh, keep growing the business. But it's it's been good, man. Congratulations on that. That's definitely incredible. Um, Thank you. What would you say are the biggest advantages of eating wild game? Um, I mean, other than it just being a little healthier than, uh, you know, a lot of the meats that are bought in the store, it's not pumped full of a bunch of hormones and um, who knows what. Um, yeah. You know, for me, it's, you know, knowing that the animals live the free wild life, you know, not just stuck in a cage in its own shit and piss and, you know, being mistreated and stuff. So for me, it's... Um, you know, just a little, little bit more peace of mind, I think. But um, as far as health goes, you know, wild game is a lot leaner than, you know, your corn-fed beef and, right. and all the other stuff that is, you know, put into the, the system there. But, um, you know, a little bit more protein as well. I know protein per pound or protein per ounce is a lot higher in, in a lot of the wild games compared to, like, beef and chicken and pork. Mm -hmm. um, so, there, I mean, there's quite a bit of health benefits to go along with it but um for me it's just knowing that you know that animal lives wild free and, and i went out there and was able to game plan and successfully harvest that animal and put it in my freezer so i dig it now is there a special way that you like to prepare your meat specifically i know last time we spoke you you were talking about this crazy grill you had that like <laughs> wood burning wood chips and the traeger man it's the traeger's lifestyle man <laughs> it's it's awesome i have um the Timberline 850, and I have um, one of the portable ones now too, the Tailgater, and uh, it's so awesome, man. Just being able to go outside, turn a knob. Um, it's a wood pellet grill, so it has like an auger that feeds it straight into the little fire pot. So if mm -hmm. I wanted to, you know, go to what 375, I just turn the dial to 375. The auger uh, sets the pellet speed being fed into the fire pot at a certain speed, and you know it stays right at whatever the temperature I wanted is. I don't have to worry about you know, making a fire and, and, you know, keeping it hot or keeping it at a certain temperature. I just come home from the gym, go outside, turn it on, turn the dial, go in, start prepping all my stuff and walk out and throw it on. But, um, yeah, man, the trigger has been a huge help for me in a lot of my training camps, just making things very convenient. Um, but not only that, man, just the, the smoke. I, I love smoking meats. Like I just actually took a, um, if you saw my Instagram, I don't know if you, you're a little bit, um, ahead of me over there but uh i did an elk heart just uh, a few hours ago oh wow and I, yeah i seasoned it it's um it's actually only half of it the elk hearts are extremely big so i halved it we um i seasoned it all up and then i smoked it for about two hours on the traeger grill and then i turned it up to about 400 and finished it off and then sliced it real thin and put it on a big salad it was amazing it so sounds amazing yeah it's good <laughs> Definitely sounds it's incredible. On my Instagram, put some pictures on my story if you want to check it out. But yeah, it turned out good. And uh, for those listening, what is your Instagram handle so they can follow also? It's just at Chad Mendez, and it's M E N D E S, uh, not a Z. Okay. Just at, at Chad Mendez. So what's it like? I've never. I don't think I've ever eaten elk heart. What's What's the taste like? Um. So it's. Have you ever had beef heart? Negative. Heart I don't think oh. I've ever had heart. Period. So it kind of has the same texture if cooked right like a filet mignon. It's like really Ooh. dense mm -hmm. but very tender. Um, it has like um, um, 
almost kind of a, a little bit of an irony taste, but it's almost like a sweet irony taste. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's um, but it's if you cook it right, it's super tender. Um, um, like the way I did it, I just smoked it, so I had like a, a smoke ring around the outside of it, and I sliced it all, and then just like threw it real quick on the grill for the grill marks, um, just for, for like extra flavor. But and I like heart. I've also had it um, where people just slice it and they'll like fry it in a pan. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's also really good. But anything fried is delicious, you know. <laughs> I've never considered eating heart, but you really do make it sound delicious. So I think I might, I might have to venture out and try that for sure. Yeah, you should try it, man. I highly recommend it. If, if it's cooked right, I've had it before where it's not very good, but um, if it's cooked right, it's it's good. All right. So the last time we saw you in action, uh, you came up with this spectacular performance of the night earning first round finish of Miles Jerry. This was back in July. And afterwards, we spoke and I asked you about Volkanovsky, who called you out after his win over your teammate Darren Elkins. And you said you thought it was a great stylistic matchup for you, but you also admitted that since he was ranked below you, that it was a backward step for you outside of a payday. So what changed to make you accept the fight? It's the only fight that they would give me. <laughs> really? They wouldn't give me anybody else. I wanted to fight the winner of Frankie and Zombie. Um, and it just they just said that's going to be too long of a time frame off. I said I'd be willing to wait. But um, ultimately, the UFC is the boss, and you know, i got to do whatever they say. So, um, you know, Alex is now the one on the radar. You know, obviously it is, in my mind, a, a step backwards only because he's ranked below me. Not because I don't think he's tough. I mean, I right. honestly think he's a tough dude. Um, so it's 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 me just having to be on my A game. Like this is a guy that's trying to make his way up in the rankings. He's a young up and comer. You know, I can't let that happen. I got to go out there. I got to destroy this guy and just keep moving forward. Now Volkanovski, he's known to get in people's faces, tank them down, and get to work with his ground strikes. Mm-hmm. Chad Mendez is quite the wrestler and isn't mm-hmm. known to be taken down. And you also possess big power in your punches. So are you going to force Volkanovski to stand with you? You know, I think this guy, you know, in all his fights leading up to this, he's, he's always been the bully in there. You know, he's never – he basically is able to dictate the pace, dictate the pace, dictate, you know, where the fight goes. And I think this is going to be a, a big awakening for him not being able to do that. You know, I think my wrestling is going to be better than his. I feel like I'm faster – you know, he hits hard, obviously, you know, talking to Darren, going over things with him. You know, I just I just have to make sure my fight IQ is on point the entire three rounds um, if it goes that long and just make sure that I'm doing exactly what we've practiced in this training camp and I win this fight. Is there any area of Vulcan's game that you're specifically looking out for? You know, I, I honestly think that we both have very similar styles. I just feel like you know, I can be better in any of those styles if I need to be. So um, I don't think there's any one particular area I'm too worried about. I mean, he's got a very well-rounded game. But, you know, like I said, I just I feel like if I need to, I can take it anywhere. Um, if it needs to stay on the feet, if it needs to go into the wrestling uh, world, that's fine. You know, obviously that's my bread and butter. Um, but like I said, I just got to make sure everything's on point. I go in there and do exactly like I've done this entire camp and, you know, we walk walk away with the W. Do you have a perf- uh, an official prediction of how it's going to end? Um, I don't, but getting that W at the end is is what I'm obviously going for. I mean, if it if it turns into a grind match with someone as tough as he is, I'm down for that. I do know if I can land a big punch, you know, anyone in this division, I can put him to sleep. So, um, you know, I, I don't have a prediction. I'm going to go in there and stay focused and win this fight. That's the prediction. Now, after this, are you gunning for Max Holloway? You want that belt? Is that is that the next step for Chad Mendes? Of course, man. That's always that's always the next step. Hopefully, like I said, ultimately it's up to the UFC. But um, I would love to get in there and, and fight a guy like Max. I really uh, like Max. I you know I think the guy's a great champion. He's respectful. He's you know he's a family man. Uh, you know it'd be an honor to get in there and fight a guy like Max. So if that's if I get in there and I beat. Uh, Alex and they they say that's the next next step for me. I'm all in. Now you've been in there with Prime Jose Aldo, Conor McGregor, Frankie Edgar. I mean, the the list goes on and on. There's a lot of talk right now about who's the goat at 145, and I'm curious how you would weigh in on that subject. The greatest? Yes, the greatest 145er. 
that's me, bro. <laughs> yeah, you've been in there. I mean, you've been in there with with the best of the best of the best. And yeah, man. I I mean, what's crazy about this sport is that it's tough to find one person and just say that person is the greatest. I mean, I feel like any of us on any given night can beat any one of one of each other. You know, it's like. This is a sport that anything could happen. These are little gloves. We're all very talented in very uh, different areas. And, you know, who, whoever's having that better night, uh, that night is going to be the, the champ. So to say somebody's the greatest, uh, you know, I don't know about all that. But, you know, I think all of us are right up in there. Now, along the lines of the GOAT, John Jones is fighting the same night, taking on Alexander Gustafson in the rematch. Who are you taking in that? Man, I don't know. I would love to see Gustafson walk away with the W just to mix it up and throw a big wrench and stuff. But, um, I mean, it was a very close fight, that first one, and it's definitely something that's possible. So um, we'll see with Jones being off, you know, how he's going to take that time off. And was he was he being diligent? Was he working? Was he staying focused? Or was he... You know, just doing crazy stuff. We don't know, so yeah, we'll find out though. Yeah, absolutely. Do uh, you got any uh, sponsors or anyone you want to give a special thank you or a shout out to? Yeah, I man. I actually just started working with a new um, diet strength company, uh, RP Strength. Um, this is the first time I've actually really focused on a very strict diet for a training camp. Um, I've always, you know, been a healthy eater. I still eat all the wild game, even with this diet. Uh, but what it's kind of forced me to do is eat more and on everything's a lot tighter and a lot um, more on schedule. So I'm, it's forcing me to actually eat more throughout this camp. Um, and it's I feel like it's really, really helped my, my endurance, my speed, my power, which is going to be a scary thing for a lot of these guys I fight. So, um, you know, I'd like to thank them. Um, uh, another company I just started working with, Iron Neck, I know – a lot of people have seen Joe Rogan talk about that on his podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just started working with these guys, so working with them, my neck has grown to be in, <laughs> incredibly strong through this training camp, which I think is huge. Um, with so much brain injury, so many brain injuries, and so much head trauma that's going around in our sport and, and a lot of other sports, strengthening the neck I think is something that's um, huge to prevent that. So. The Iron Neck is something that I, you know, a company I teamed up with um, and wanted to obviously get on the boat seeing Joe Rogan talk about it. and um, It's definitely helped me a lot through this camp. So those two people for sure. And then, you know, I do have a lot of uh, companies I work with in the outdoor industry. Um, uh, Traeger, obviously, is one of them. Hoyt, uh, Mountain Ops, Lethal, uh, uh, Vortex Optics, and um, who am I forgetting? Kuyu. Key Camouflage Company. <clears throat> so those guys are always, they've had my back for multiple years now. So for the one or two people who aren't following you on social media already, your handles are at Chad Mendez across the board? Yep, across the board. Um, that's Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And then I also have a YouTube channel. I think it's just Chad Mendez, the YouTube. So anyone who wants to check out, I do a lot of um, – hunting videos uh how to like as far as cooking that wild game and stuff and then also a lot of training videos leading up to my last fight um we're talking about doing some leading up to this fight uh, the last last couple weeks of camp so if anyone's interested in following along checking it out head over and uh, subscribe thank you guys awesome well chad mendez thank you so much for taking out the time once again to speak with me alexander volkanovsky is in your crosshairs ufc 232 on december 29th have fun out there. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. It's good talking to you again. Yes, sir. Talk to you soon. All right.